Your EV battery is too big. Here's why that's a problem. Hey there, EV fans and future believers in the electric revolution. You've just tuned into EVpedia, your go-to destination where we dig deep into the real stories behind electric vehicles. If you're watching this and haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? It's like owning an EV but never plugging it in, you're missing the charge. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and help us hit our challenge. 12,000 likes and 1,200 comments within the next 24 hours. That's right, 12k and 1.2k, and with our amazing EVpedia family, I know we can do it. To all our regular viewers and loyal subscribers, you are the heart and soul of EVpedia. Without you, we wouldn't be here sharing these electrifying stories. Oh, and just a quick note. This video is for educational and commentary purposes only and respects all copyrights under fair use. Now let me kick things off with a question for you. How much do you think it costs to fast charge a Silverado EV from 10% to 80%? Think you know the answer? Drop your guess in the comments below. And stick around, because I'll reveal the shocking truth at the end. Alright, let's talk about something that most automakers won't. Your EV's battery might actually be too big. Sorry, but it's true. Here in the Midwest, where I live and work, driving an EV still sparks a lot of debate. People tell me all the time that EVs are expensive to charge, they take too long to recharge, and they're simply not ready for prime time. Many folks even argue that hybrid vehicles are a better investment. And yet, when pressed, most admit they don't really want a hybrid either. So what's the real story? Well, I've made it my personal mission to bust these myths to show people how affordable and efficient EVs can actually be. I've shown neighbors how plugging in at home costs pennies compared to filling up at the pump. I've even taken press cars around just to prove how inexpensive and convenient they really are. But not every EV makes my job easy. Some, like the Chevy Silverado EV, actually reinforce the critics' points. Let me explain why. A few weeks back, I got my hands on a shiny new Chevrolet Silverado EV LT extended range. On paper, it looked like a dream. Big range, big towing capacity, big everything. The truck claimed a staggering 450 miles of range at freeway speeds and could still tow while covering over 200 miles before needing a recharge. Sounds perfect, right? Well, that range comes at a cost. Literally, thanks to its absolutely massive battery. The Silverado's battery clocks in at a jaw-dropping 170 kilowatt-hours, nearly twice what you'd find in a Hyundai Ioniq 5. And here's where things start to fall apart. When I took the truck for a fast charging test, Chevrolet's numbers seemed promising. They claimed it could charge from 10% to 80% in about 40 minutes on a 350 kilowatts DC fast charger, and it did. I watched the battery gulp down electrons at three-digit speeds for most of the session. But then came the bill. For that 10 to 80% charge, the Silverado consumed about 137.66 kilowatt hours, at a peak hour rate of 64 cents per kilowatt hour. That's right, nearly $90, and I wasn't even at 100%. If I'd charged it all the way to full, it would have easily crossed the $100 mark. Oh, and it still took 40 minutes out of my day. For context, Refilling a gas-powered Silverado 2500 with its 36-gallon tank would have cost me around $100. And it wouldn't have taken 40 minutes. So where's the win? Even worse, this was at a perfect, top-tier charging station delivering the promised 350 kilowatts. Many stations don't actually deliver that kind of power consistently. On a slower charger, this truck would have turned into a nightmare scenario, taking even longer and costing even more. And don't think home charging is much better. Sure, Chevy says the Silverado can go from empty to full in 8 to 10 hours at home, but only if you've got the optional 19.2 kilowatts charger and an 80 amp circuit in your house. Most homes don't. If you're like most Americans with a 40 amp charger, you're looking at twice that time, and that's assuming your electrical panel can even handle it. Now don't get me wrong, I still believe in EVs. They're the future. But the Silverado EV is a perfect example of what happens when automakers build vehicles based on what they think Americans want, big, heavy, powerful, instead of what actually makes sense for electric mobility. Other automakers are proving that you can do more with less. 
Lucid Motors built the Air, an incredibly efficient sedan with superb range thanks to its sleek design and advanced motors. Hyundai's Ioniq 6 achieves similar feats with its slippery shape and light frame. Over in China, the pint-sized BYD Seagull gets a staggering 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour. All because it's light and efficient. Even Chevy seems to know the huge battery approach isn't sustainable. They're already working on smaller battery versions of the Silverado and experimenting with better chemistries for higher efficiency. This trend of chasing range at any cost, financial, environmental, or practical, just isn't helping the EV cause. Oh, and did I mention? That monster 170 kilowatt hour battery also contributes to the Silverado's eye-watering $85,000 price tag. And this critique isn't limited to Chevy. Rivian's Max Pack trucks, Tesla's Cybertruck, they're all guilty of the same overkill. So here's my take as EVpedia. Smaller EVs with smaller batteries aren't just more affordable, they're smarter. They're better for your wallet, better for the grid, better for the planet. And that's the direction we need to head in if we really want EVs to succeed. But what do you think? Is bigger always better? Or should automakers focus on efficiency and smarter design over brute force? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And hey, if you learned something new today, please consider sharing this video with a friend who's curious about EVs. By the way, the answer to the question I asked earlier, how much it costs to fast charge a Silverado EV from 10% to 80%? about $89.09, and that doesn't even top it off. Surprised. I was too. And here's a cool EV fact to leave you with. Did you know that the very first electric car to break 60 miles per hour was built all the way back in 1899? It was called La Jamais Contente, French for the never satisfied, and it topped out at 65.79 miles per hour. Proof that EV innovation has always been about pushing boundaries, not just making things bigger. So, before you go, help us reach our challenge. 12,000 likes and 1,200 comments within 24 hours. Smash that like button, drop your thoughts in the comments, share this video with a fellow car enthusiast, and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a ride with EVpedia. Your voice matters here, and we love hearing from you. So tell us. Would you rather have an EV with huge range and huge battery, or a smaller, smarter EV that costs less and charges faster? Let us know in the comments. Until next time, stay charged, stay curious, and remember, the best EVs don't just move us forward, they make us think smarter about how we get there.